Okay. All right, so we're back. We kind of discussed a little bit of the things going on with the piston geometry, but I'm having a lot of fun here talking to Eric because he's so knowledgeable about this stuff. Um, and I, and I want to give you guys a little bit of a deep dive, but not lose you. So uh, just kind of stay tuned for this. We, I still, there's a lot more about geometry. And I actually, I think you were at uh, Norse Marshall's at Blueprint. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed your tech talk uh, there. And I, I'm going to get into that a little bit. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about geometry pistons because it, the technology behind a piston is so easy to misunderstand and uh, be underwhelmed at the complexity of it. So the more you look at it, the ring land, which you would think would just be a groove. Uh, somebody comes in with a grooving tool and just cuts it and bam, there you go. Slide your ring in and you're done. Yep. That's not the case. Now, Tell me and, a little bit about it. And ring lands are probably one of the most crucial elements in the piston in terms of the performance of it. It can differentiate a, a good piston from a bad piston. Um, cutting the shape of that, getting the ovality right. So again, it all comes back to managing that heat as mm -hmm. it expands. Um, and keeping the ring flat, not only when it comes off the machine, but when it's in that engine and running, you need good, good sealing surface. You know, the ring seals against the wall, but it also has to seal against the piston. There's two pathways that you can leak gases, and if those two aren't working hand in hand, you know, you just got a slug in a hole that's not doing much right. for you. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's uh, it's so interesting as the compression takes place, it's important to have a positive angle of lead for that, that ring because as it as it compresses, yeah. it's going to now straighten out and become more perpendicular to the wall itself. Yeah. And if it starts out with a negative angle, and now we just push it even further. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And accommodating for wear and things that happen naturally. Yeah. So we've got wear, you've got pressure, you've got temperature. There's a lot of variables that are, and everything's moving, you know, mm -hmm. at the speed of, you know, several thousand feet per second. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some of the other things that are really cool about piston design now, I see this difference is that, um, and I'm going to flip this over, but we have a salt bath ring, uh, I suppose, on this side here. Mm -hmm. So where our piston cooling jet is going to be spraying in, we can we can spray oil to the top of that piston to help cool it. But we don't have that on this forged piston. So there again, we're starting to see a lot of the difference between the daily driver and the all out, you know, I'm going to blow it up and tro it's going home on a trailer. So it's all out full and, tilt. And that's one of those other features that's unique to a casting. You can, you can do things like put galleries right. inside of the piston. Um, and, th and that gallery, you know, the, the oil squirter is directed into it. it, it partially filled and you're cooling both the crown of your piston, which comes back to the cracking issues that right. we talked about, and keeping that ring groove cool, which comes to some of the coking things, protecting rings, not, not trying to anneal them. Um, but you can't do that with the force part. So right. all, you, all you have, you have to rely completely on just spraying the undercrown and transferring all that heat through it, which is important and, and it's you know certainly not worth neglecting, but it's nowhere near as effective as something that's very targeted to the internal aspects of the part. Keeping something, and this is a big understanding that people, this misunderstanding I think people have, is that making power and then making power live are not the same thing. No, 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 Quarter no. mile, 250,000 miles, 300,000, 400,000 miles, not the same thing, not the same approach, not the same engineering and the designing. So it's, it's quite different. And on a part that's so small, there's so much of a different approach to that. Um, I will add this because I just I think it's really, really cool. The geometry that you talked about, I know that it might not affect some of the stuff that we're working on here, but the wrist pin area. So again, you think you know it all, when you look at something and then you go, oh my goodness, I had no idea there was even more uh, to learn about just a round part, what seemingly would be a round part. Well, the piston pin is probably as simple a geometry as you can find in the engine, but it's amazing. There's still ways to get it wrong. And, and heavier right. is not always better, lighter is not always better, material doesn't always solve your problems. They have to be designed and made to work hand in hand uh, because they can actually, you can actually create more problems for you know the engine yourself and, and lead to failures from from choosing or selecting those components in a, in a fashion that doesn't hurt so you're your telling engine. me that these, these these pin boss areas on some pistons are not round oh no absolutely not even not. close to it um, nope just like just like we can do shape on the on the on the skirts on the od of the piston you can put shape into the pin bore because again um, you know it may start round here cold on the table but put it in an engine under deformation with temperature and it doesn't stay around so can we build shapes into that bore 
to accommodate to what's happening and, and, and or increase the strength or the durability, the longevity, all those factors go hand in hand. And plus, plus we also have to, uh, there's features that we can build into the pin board to help oiling, lubrication, things, things of that nature. So. And you'll see some of that, I guess, in some of the pistons with the reliefs. Yep, that one does have a broken yep. side relief in it to, yep. uh, to and introduce oil. Yeah, so the static and the dynamic, totally different. Yeah. What you see on the table, but what you want to see under load, completely and drastically different. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there's there's so many cool things, and I greatly appreciate your time on this because it's it's fascinating to me. Oh, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I've, I've I've been in the piston business for 20 years. It's all I know. It's all I've ever done, and I still learn something every day. So, something that should be you know should be a master at at this point, but I don't have a clue. <laughs> well, you've got a piston sitting over here. I want you to talk about this one in the chair, and uh, kind of. Tell us about this a little bit. Yeah, we were just talking about the ability to shape, um, you know, form these shapes and fit them to the engine. And this this is really a, a hats off to our, our manufacturing group. Absolutely. Um, this, this feature that you see is turned into the skirt. You know, that's not a machining. That's not a... So the ability to control that machine to be able to turn, if we can write your name in it, we can make a shape that'll live in that engine, right? And yeah. to fine tune it to the application that we're trying to do. So for 99% of the people that are watching, they probably are, this is gonna go right over their heads. They're not gonna be able to appreciate it. Me as a machinist, I look at that and I go, wow. I see the complexity, because most of that, um, a turning operation, obviously, we're spinning the part. We've got to so insert. The, if I'm the tool and you're spinning it, right. And I'm having to adjust that as it turns it's, and moves down the part. That's that's do really impressive to be able to do that feature, um, which is really really cool. Um, most of the time, people would ball mill that, come in, you know, with a small end yep. mill. And you can feel that that's raised; it's yeah. not engraved into the part. Exactly. Yep. It's like uh, it's it's the difference between this embossment here, and you don't see that here. So, really impressive. Some very cool technology. We are extremely. Um, Excited as always to be uh, working with the best in the business, and that's the reason why we partner uh, with guys like Eric Kamala. And um, just uh, stay tuned for tons of great more tech talk about these kind of things. Uh, we've got a lot of cool projects coming up. For those of you that have been watching the Diesel Masters, uh, we're working on a land speed record. Um, we've also got this uh, this build coming up for the Duramax. A lot of exciting things in the work, and just again, we're so excited to be working and grateful to be working with these guys. So stay tuned for a lot more great information.